Welcome back everyone to Retro Tech. Now today I've got a 20M2 Sony PVM right behind me here that's going to be shipped out to a Patreon member named Jesus. You might remember uh, the box review I did of the 20L2 Sony PVM original box. Well, today uh, that, that box came from Jesus with the 20L2 that he was donating for parts that had some pretty major issues in it. So today I'm actually taking this 20M2 and we're going to pack it back in that box and send it off to uh, lovely Southern Florida. So today I just wanted to show you the process of me putting this in that box. We're going to go down and ship it. Before I pack this thing, I want to do one last geometry check as well as a screen quality check. So let's take a quick look at that right now. Let's just do a quick spot check here. I've got the 240p test suite pulled up on my Super Nintendo. We're using RGB. These are the main calibration screens I'm going to be checking. Okay, so the first thing I'm checking here is this grid pattern, which is going to tell you quite a few things. You can see an overall screen geometry. You can tell if you have any tilt to your yoke, which we don't see. You can also see the screen sharpness, as well as your focus really well on this picture. So that's a great calibration screen to use. Another one will be our linearity screen. We can see how linear our circles are on there. And then we can check out some other things too, such as color bars. And you can turn up your color here to see your three boxes here, but that's another one to check out. And there are a lot of other test patterns on here. But for the most part, this thing was already calibrated. I just want to do a spot check before I put it in the box. All right, so now we've got our box, and then this is the monitor in the protective bag. But before we go and put this in the box, I want to show you the box, because I did put an additional layer of cardboard here. So let's just take a quick glance around this box so I can show you what I've done. So here's our box, and if you just take a look, um, I'm ready to set the monitor down in there in the bottom. But what I've done here is I've actually built an outside layer of a box so I can give it a third layer of protection. And since it's a custom sized box where there's not really something I could order that would fit over this perfectly, uh, I cut up a larger box. And I left the sides of the top out like this just so that I could leave these handles here and hopefully the delivery guy will see those and after I've stickered and everything, you'll see those and, and use those and that, I still feel like that'll be enough protection um, everywhere else. So now we're just going to go ahead and put the monitor in here. I'm just going to try to set this down in the little nook and cranny right there. And it fits in there nicely. So I'm still going to fill this, all these side vent areas with bubble wrap now or not bubble wrap I'm sorry packing peanuts and some bubble wrap too now we'll actually put some bubble wrap in here so I'll show you that go ahead and get to packing Okay, so there it is, all the layers of bubble wrap and packing peanuts pushed down as dense as I could get them, just to prevent it from moving around. Let's put the top on. I'm 
them last four feet. Up. So here we have it, the finished box. I just wanted to show you the final things I did to it. I do add fragile arrows up towards the top, fragile on the top, this side up, and I made these arrows and this side up just with paper and a sharpie, and then I tape it over so it's impossible for those things to get water on them or fall off or anything. So I put that on every single side. Every single side gets those stickers. And then I go around them with tape. You can see we got a lot of tape protecting these corners and things. Now look, a lot of people say, you know, hey, this doesn't mean anything when you're shipping something, at least not to the shipper. Now, that's most likely true sometimes, but what I got to tell you is this is more of a cover your butt kind of thing. And what I mean by that is I'm covering my own butt so that if the shipper does something and puts this upside down or ships it with the glass side up, which is pretty much the only way that they could really destroy this is if they ship it with the glass side up and the back on its back because then the pressure and if they hit a speed bump the glass can fall and, and just destroy the inside of the monitor. So that's the only way. So I want to make sure that I got these arrows on here and that they can't fall off. That way if uh, something happens and we have to file an insurance claim, they've got nothing to complain about. They all right, I'm back from the shipping company and I'm just going to run down a little bit of details for you in case you wanted to know a little bit more about the shipping procedure. In my area, FedEx does the best job. I've tried them all and for ground shipment, just where I live and where I have to operate from, FedEx is the best. That might be different in your area. You might get better service from another company, but that's just where I am. And what I can tell you about FedEx is you don't have to be a huge client. You can go ahead and sign up for like a business account. And if you do that ahead of time and you go into a FedEx location and you use that to pay with, you can just about always save 10% almost off of uh, shipping fees and some supplies and stuff. But pretty much the best part about it is your ground shipping fees. You can save 10%, usually maybe sometimes 5 but most of the time 10% if you use your account to pay rather than just walking in and paying with a card. So that is some way to save a little bit of money. So the cost today for just the shipping after my discount uh, was $102. And that's insured for $400 and um, ground shipment. And their ground shipment, it'll be there in two business days. So that's really quick. That's probably quicker than they could get it there unless they flew it. Also, if you um, have trouble packing your PVM or anything like that, I wouldn't even take the risk. I would just take it to a FedEx location if I didn't have that nice of a box and kind of talk to them and see about them quoting to uh, pack it themselves because that way they guarantee their shipping insurance, which is very important. So I've gone in there and I've not used a 20 inch monitor yet to ship with them, let them pack, but I have done a 14 inch monitor. They only charged me $30 to pack it and insure it. And then it was about another $60 in shipping fees where it went. So for a 14 inch monitor, $100 almost right on the money, got it within about 700 miles of where I'm located. Today's trip for the 20 inch monitor is about 800 miles, give or take some more. And it should be there later on this week. But those are just some uh, nice juicy details on shipping. And again, if you need to, you can use other shipping uh, companies, but don't ever underestimate um, how much it can cost to ship and pack these things properly. Make sure you give yourself enough of a cushion uh, to protect yourself from losing money or having to skip out on packaging materials. I want to go through just some of the costs that were on top of that $101. So that was after my 10% discount. So you would have added about another $11 on that if I wouldn't have had that discount. As well as the uh, box came out to about $20 to $25 additional costs. And all the other stuff was from when... I got the PVM shipped to me originally, so I didn't have to uh, buy any new stuff like that. The labels did cost a little bit of money, the fragile labels. So there's always that. And then you have to consider the amount of energy and time it will take you to pack a monitor because it's generally at least an hour long uh, job. 
Well, anyway, that's a lot about shipping. I'm glad to anybody, thank you, that stayed around to this point and watched this video. I did want to give a quick message here. I've been doing some statistics on my YouTube channel, running things, and it appears that not a large percentage of the people that maybe watch these videos are actually subscribed to my channel. It seems that about only 25% of my viewing audience, maybe 30 now, is what I was looking at. 25 to 30% are actually only subscribed to the channel. The other 70% are not subscribed to the channel. So if you like this kind of content at all and you find it interesting or if there's something you don't want to miss, I do put out almost two videos a week on average. And I, if, you know, if you're not subscribed, you won't catch all of them. And if you're not hitting the bell,